Welcome back to College Football Addiction. And what we told you earlier in the week about Colorado, both here and on my buddy Jay's channel, the prime time for college football, absolutely rang true. And then Colorado shocked me and did things that I didn't even think would be possible in this game against Arizona. Let's start from the very top, but if you're here for the Arizona-Colorado coverage, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. I know you guys are all subscribed over at the Prime Time for College Football. If you're not, go check them out too. But make sure you're hitting it on this side as well. We told you that Colorado would, if they responded the way that they were capable of it, this thing could get out of hand, and Colorado would be talked about as a team in the Big 12 that could potentially start to run the table on the rest of their schedule. Right now, sitting at 5-2, and two, they've got five games left, and they are favored in every single one of those games. Every single game that they have left, Cincinnati, Texas Tech, Utah, Kansas, and Oklahoma State, they're favored in those games. And let me just tell you something. We'll talk about the Arizona game in a moment. If they win those five games, I cannot see them leaving a 10-2 and two Coach Prime team out of the playoff, especially when only one of those losses was a conference loss to a really good Kansas State team who just continues to win in the Big 12. Now, you need a little bit of help to get into that Big 12 championship game. Not impossible. It'd be great if BYU would have dropped their game to Oklahoma State the other night. That would have helped you out some. But... I can't see him leaving a 10-2 and two Coach Prime team out. Just telling you. You got to go out and execute, though. You got to go out and finish. And boy, did they do that this weekend. And it started from the top. Coach Prime said this was somewhat disrespectful. If you listen to the Deion Sanders press conference after the game, he said this was a little bit disrespectful. I don't want to disagree with Coach Prime, right? I don't want to disagree and say that he's not right there because I think there's one aspect of it where you could look at that onside kick and say that's a little bit disrespectful to open up a game with that I don't know if it was disrespectful or if it was just scared like from the jump I think Arizona knew they had to steal possessions I think from the very first kickoff Arizona knew what was coming I think they knew this was a bad matchup for them I think they knew that this was a team that was going to be pissed off because of the way that they played last week I think they knew they were going to get a hungry Buffs team I think they were, knew that they were going to get a Buffs team that loves playing on the road as coach Prime talked about as well and I think they knew they had to try and steal as many possessions as they could hey we're going to catch them napping but guess what coach Prime talked about it he had them practice special teams first and that's what they always done that's what they always do a focus on special teams. They were ready. They had their athletes out there. They got the ball. They got the short field, and they went out and capitalized immediately. The, 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 the mistake that Arizona made by attempting that onside kick, by trying to, by playing scared, right? Like they knew they had to have it. The mistake that they made was compounded on a nice pass to Wester. You got a touchdown run where Shador pushes the running back into the end zone, and you go up 7-0. Then you get a pitch to Miller, touchdown there, 14-0. Arizona does answer to make it 14-17, to or 14-7. to On a fourth and 10, Mr. Reliable, Travis Hunter, we'll talk about him in a moment, gets you the first down. Shepard, one-handed touchdown grab, which was phenomenal. Originally called not a touchdown, obviously reversed, called a touchdown, 21-7. to The thing feels like it's teetering on being over. And you don't ever want to say that that early, but we're obviously recapping it now with the benefit of hindsight. You never want to say it feels like it's over, but it felt like it was this close to being over. Shepard's one-handed touchdown gets you to 21-7. to Late in the second quarter, sloppy from both teams. Back-to-back -back fumbles for both sides. A Shador interception. And then a nice punt return by Horn kind of settles things down. And Shador Sanders looked like, you know, he looked like Cam Ward. Calm, cool, collected, waltzes right into the end zone, 28-7 to at the half. You get a field goal in the second half to go up 31-7, to six minutes to go in the third. At that point, you know it's over. Oaken Lula had a big sack to bring down the uh, Fafita on fourth down. Uh, Colton Hood's interception almost gets into the end zone for the second week in a row. You get another field goal, 34-7, to and that's the final. Travis Hunter, obviously a big, big storyline in this. What's his status? Coach Prime said precautionary. 
a little bit tensed up, a little bit ting. Like they could tell he just wasn't Hunter. Told him to come out. Obviously, competitor doesn't want to. What a what what a job by this staff and by this and this team to not have this game in doubt where you needed Travis Hunter late. You think about that Colorado State game. If they had taken care of business last year in that Colorado State game to where Hunter wasn't playing late, maybe he doesn't, you know, just maybe they use him differently. But to be a, but what a luxury. If I had told you Hunter wasn't going to play for half this game before the game, how worried would you have been? I'd have been a little worried. He's the best player in the country. And like Coach Prime says, he impacts you on both sides of the ball. So you take him out and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's not playing half the game. What, he got hurt again? I told you they'd take him out for an injury. I bet you wouldn't feel very comfortable with that. You wouldn't feel very confident. And not that the other members of the team around him aren't great. They are. But you take the best player off of any team, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What are we doing here? I thought it was really impressive how they were able to do that as a precautionary measure because everybody else around him played so well. They picked him up today. They rebounded from last week. Man, we told you that Kansas State game sucked, right? You had a chance up three late and thought you might be able to get it done. Just couldn't get enough. Couldn't get over the finish line. But they rebounded from that. And that Kansas State team is really good. And you barely lost to them. And you, that this is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see the response. Because last year when this happened, when they had emotional big losses, what, did, what happened? One loss turned into two losses, turned into three losses, turned into four losses, turned into what did they lose? Six in a row down the stretch? This was so impressive to see them rebound and come out and say, look, we're going to be better. And they were. Defense. My goodness. The biggest worries that we had about this team the coming into the season were defense and offensive line. Offensive line gave up one sack on the day. One sack. Let me tell you something. They give up one sack a game for the rest of the year. I don't see how they lose. Coach Prime said it. We can spin it with the best of them. They got the running game going today, which is another major concern. We wanted to see that get better. Defense was really good. One touchdown for Arizona today. One touchdown. We talked about how good Fafita was. We talked about how good McLean or T-Mac was. We talked about that. Defense on fire today. Offense did plenty. 34 points is going to win you a lot of games if the defense plays like that. Shoot. Yeah, a lot of games. Going forward, you got now here's what you got to do. You got to sustain. Last week, and we're going to talk about it this week when we talk about the game, but last week was about responding. This week is about sustaining. It's not enough to get punched in the mouth and then come back the next week like they did to last night and respond. That's great. That's phenomenal. Coach Prime knows that's great, and, and you should celebrate that. There's no reason not to. You've already passed last season's win total. Good job. They're not where they want to get yet. Now it's about sustaining that. Now it's about continuing that. And if they can do that, I expect them to win next Saturday. I expect it to be a win for Colorado. But just expecting it and going out and executing are two very different things. They are two very, very different things. And that's what will determine the success of Colorado's season. Because if you throw away last night's performance by losing this weekend, last night won't even matter. you got to sustain it. I expect they will. I like the focus. This team was uh, the laughing stock in the second half of last year, and I think they're going to have a lot of people eating crow, eating their own words, because Coach Prime does look like he's put something together here. If you don't see that right now, then maybe you need a couple more weeks of them winning, which I think is probably going to happen. But, man, what a job. We told you earlier, if they just go from one win to four wins to eight wins, that would be phenomenal. It looks like they should get above eight wins this year. Can they get to that 10 number? If so, I think they're going to the playoff. Can they get to nine? One to four to nine? I, again, they're favored in every game they have left. Cincinnati, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, Kansas, and one more that I'm missing in there. Cincinnati, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, Kansas, and I don't know. I'm, I'm missing. Oh, Utah. Utah. Who's playing right now as I'm recording this? I don't even know what the score of that game is. They're going to be favored in every one of them. Utah, good defense. They're going to have to be on their A game that game. 
But I like the way this team's playing right now. I, you know, not going deep into the stats, not doing any of that. Just wanted to kind of share our thoughts. If you enjoy this content at all, do me a favor. Again, hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned here to College Football Addiction. Hey, do me a favor. If you're watching this, let me know. A lot of people root for the Buffs because they love Coach Prime, but they have a, another team they root for as well. Do me a favor and comment the team. The, if, if you have a second team, if you're not just here for Coach Prime only, if you have a second team, who is that? We'll try and do content around that team as well. We try and hit on all the big games. But if you have a team that we're not really covering too much here, comment it below, and I will certainly try and do my best to try and provide some coverage to some other teams, some new teams, as we're a little over halfway done with the season. It flies by. Let me know down in the comments. I appreciate you guys for tuning in here to College Football Addiction.